How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Well, it's Friday here on the show. You know what that means. We have a lot to talk about here today. We've got a big weekend coming up. Had a big week. SmackDown is tonight as we build towards WrestleMania, which is coming up soon. We got a lot going on. Over the next few weeks. Next Saturday, March 25th, I will be wrestling myself and Filthy Tom Lawler versus the Bang Bros. Black Label Pro. If you're in the area, you can go. And if you're not in the area, well, you don't have to go. You can watch on Fight. Fight Fight.tv. So that's coming up next Saturday. Then I come back, and then I go to WrestleMania. I will be there for... The entire WrestleMania weekend, night one, night two, and uh, whatever exciting stuff, maybe that uh, Ring of Honor pay-per-view, whatever I can get to, I'm going to be going to the weekend after that. And uh, we'll be talking about all of it here on the show, because tonight's SmackDown. Well, they have a couple of weeks left. we got to get that angle going. Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn versus The Usos. We'll talk about SmackDown. We also have an update on Kofi Kingston, which is not the update that everybody wanted. He's going to need surgery. We'll tell you about that, as well as the latest on the New Japan Cup. We're down to the final matches here. We have got uh, quarterfinals and semifinals and finals. Whole thing ends on March 21st, so just a few days away. The AEW House Rules show is coming up tomorrow. They're running house shows. I got some stuff to say about that. We've also got an update on Pat McAfee, and we will take your feedback here today. For now, text me, 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com. At Brian Alvarez on Twitter. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper, BB, also WrestlingObserver.com. So tomorrow, AEW has a house show. AEW House rules and we have some matches announced for the show and on uh, tuesday's brian and Minnie show i'm sorry tuesday's uh figure four daily with lance storm we had a long discussion about house shows because everyone knows everything about house shows even though you don't we don't know anything about house shows to be honest we don't know if they're going to do well we don't know if they're not going to do well but i have some thoughts on how to make them do well. So here's the thing. Here is a lineup thus far for the AEW House Show coming up on March 18th. Troy, Ohio. We have got John Moxley and Claudio Castagnoli versus Big Bill and Lee Moriarty. We have Dr. Britt Baker versus Anna J. And we have Orange Cassidy and Darby Allen against The Butcher and The Blade. Okay? That's the lineup thus far. And to me, to me, if you're going to be running house shows, this is not going to work. Okay? Now, do I think that John Moxley and Claudio versus Big Bill and Lee Moriarty is going to be a good match? Yeah, it's probably going to be a really good match. You got Moxley and Claudio in there, and, you know, they never have a bad match, and you know, Big Bill, you can do, you can work around whatever, you know, whatever's going to happen here, Big Bill. Britt Baker and Anna Jay. I mean, this is Anna Jay's first match back since injury, so hopefully she's ready to go. And then Orange Cassidy and Darby versus Butcher and Blade. I mean, it's probably going to be a very good match. But here's the thing to me. If, if, you, if you are in Troy, Ohio, and you don't get AEW there, and you want to see everybody... Yeah, you're probably going to buy some tickets for the show, okay? But, you know, you might be on the fence when you see the lineup. Because here's the thing to me. If you're going to run house shows as AEW, you need to be giving people matches that they're not going to see on television. And matches that maybe the only way to see these matches is to buy or go to a pay-per-view. I mean, it's not about, especially with AEW, it's not about... Who is going to be on the show in some capacity? Yeah, in WWE, their audience, the WWE audience, is is conditioned that the important thing is the brand, 
And what we want to do is we want to create a bunch of stars, okay? You know, Seth Rollins came out the other day. He's laughing off Logan Paul. He's in his stupid jacket. The people are singing his song. And I said, Dave, like, what is up with this gimmick? And Dave's response was, he's a star. That's what they want their audience. They want their audience to see Seth Rollins as a star. Does it matter that he's facing Logan Paul? Well, not really. I mean, Seth doesn't care about it. He laughed off getting knocked out. Seth is a star. Roman Reigns, they want him to be a star. Rhea Ripley, they want her to be a star. They want these people to be stars. So therefore, if they're going to run a house show in Seattle, what they do is they say, here are the stars that are going to be on the show. Roman Reigns is going to be there. The Usos are going to be there. Rhea Ripley and Charlotte, like these stars are going to be there. And their audience is like, holy smokes, I can go see these people. Doesn't matter what the card is, okay? With AEW, it's different. I'm not saying nobody in AEW is a star. But if you want to sell tickets to an AEW house show, then, uh, you know, what's the lineup? Well, you know, John Moxley is going to face, uh, you know, John Moxley is going to face the hangman. Uh, Sting and, and Darby Allen are going to be teaming up together to face the Young Bucks, whoever. I mean, you've got to do big pay-per-view caliber matches for these house shows, these untelevised events. That's going to sell tickets to the event. I mean, I don't know how they've done so far with the. Uh, I, I can I can try and look up how how many tickets they've sold thus far, but like to me, if you want to sell tickets, what are your top programs right now? What were your top matches at the last pay per view, and what are your top matches for the the next pay per view? That needs to be the lineup for Troy, Ohio. Otherwise, it's just you know, I I'd, I'd go because I'm an AEW fan, but I think there's a lot of people that might be on the fence that are going to look at the lineup as AEW fans and go. Moxley and Claudio versus The Firm. I mean, Britt Baker versus Anna Jay. Orange and Darby versus The Butcher and The Blade. Like, these are not big matches. These are not big ticket-selling matches. And I think for house shows, that's the key. You need big ticket-selling matches. The House of Black is going to face The Elite. Uh, Britt Baker is going to face... I mean, she's not going to face Thunder Rosa, but if she were around, like, that's that's your big women's match. Or... or uh, you know, what they're setting up on television. Britt Baker and uh, and Jamie Hayter. And who's the third one that they've got? Uh, whoever versus, you know, Ruby Soho, Soraya, if she can work. And it's a six-person anyway, so you don't have to do much. But you got to put that match at the house show. And, yeah, you're giving it away, but it's an untelevised event. It's the exact same thing that, you know, WWE will do. They'll put their top matches. I mean, they did that... that uh, that I think it was Toronto or whatever it was. They did Roman Reigns and Sami Zayn. And as soon as they announced the match, they sold another 800 tickets or whatever. What was the finish? It doesn't matter. It was a house show. So anyway, that's what I think they should be doing for house shows. But that is not what they're doing Saturday night. Well, I think also it's region specific as well, too, because I do agree with your overall point. You've got to give people a reason to buy tickets. You've got to give them a reason to come out and see some things. You've got to give them some stars and you got to give them some angles that you've been doing on TV. That's important. But, you know, Troy, Ohio, the Hobart Center is about 3,700 people or something like that. So. Maybe this is a test balloon, but I do think that you have to be careful depending on the region that you go in and the building that you run because, uh, yeah, you couldn't go into Toronto or New York or Los Angeles with that type of card and expect to turn around and get people's money just because it's AEW on the marquee. So I think there's a happy medium there. We're not going to see, I think, pay-per-view matches on house shows as far as some of these matchups yet, at least when it comes to some of these cities. We'll have to see as we go forward when they get into bigger cities if they decide to take that approach. But you've got to give at least people some of what they're seeing on TV and probably more stars than just Orange, Darby, Moxley, and Claudio, and no offense to anybody else, and Britt Baker. Obviously, those are five of their biggest names that they have. But unfortunately, again, I don't know what they've sold. I don't know what their philosophy is going into it. But yeah, on the surface, that to me is probably not enough to separate me from a $50 ticket and then two for my kids and, and everything that comes with the merch and everything that comes with that day. So here's the thing with AEW fans. If you announced the Blackpool Combat Club, 
versus The Firm and The Young Bucks versus The Butcher and the Blade, you're going to sell X number of tickets. If you have those exact same people on the show, but now it is Moxley and Claudio versus The Young Bucks, guaranteed you're selling more tickets. The exact same guys on the show, guaranteed you're selling more tickets. This person here notes, I remember a house show in the 90s I went to. On the house show, Steve Austin and The Undertaker teamed up together. And he goes, you never saw this on television. But like, holy smokes, I can buy a ticket and see Steve Austin and The Undertaker team up on television. And holy smokes, that's like a big deal. And Brian. you could also have like, well, you know, Steve Austin's going to face Rockabilly. And The Undertaker is going to face, comma, the Supreme Fighting Machine. And it's like, you'll sell X number of tickets. But all of a sudden, if you put Steve Austin and The Undertaker teaming together, all of a sudden, you're just automatically selling more tickets. Because it's like something, wow, I actually get to see that for my money. That's what you want fans to think for a house show. Wow, I get to see that for my money. And nothing against anybody on this AEW house show. But there is no match here where as a fan, you're going to think, Wow, I get to see that for my money? That's what you need to give the people. That's Roman Reigns and Sami Zayn at that house show. When they announced that match, six, 800 people all of a sudden went, wow, I get to see that for my money? And they all bought tickets. That's the key to a house show. And look, I can't say that I love the main event, but let's remember what house shows used to be for as well, too, which was having different types of matchups and trying to place people against each other in experience. That's something that a lot of the AEW roster needs. So looking forward to some of it. Back in a moment, Observer Live. I see people here saying, oh, man, here we go. Listen, no one's saying this is a disaster yet. I don't know what the economics are. I don't know what the finances are. I don't know what the it, nothing. I don't know anything. Okay. Well, what I know is that, according to WrestleTix, the building is a 3,800-seat building. It is set up for about 2116, and it looks like they've sold around 1,000 tickets, okay? The show's tomorrow. I believe with a stronger card, with a Moxley Hangman main event, Young Bucks versus whatever, it would have done better and could do better. And uh, that's that's what I think. And I think that that's what you need to do if you want to sell more tickets for these pay-per-views. I mean, I, I will never... I mean, this is a long time ago and everything. But I will never forget when I went to a, a wacky WWF house show in the Seattle Center Coliseum. And I don't even remember what the main event was. It doesn't matter. But during intermission, they announced the next time they come here to this building... I think the match was Hulk Hogan versus the Earthquake. And they'd done that angle on the Brother Love show where Hulk Hogan is squashed by the Earthquake. But the point is, the, the moment they mentioned Hulk Hogan's name, like all around me, these, these grown adults, literally, I'm not making this up, they leaped to their feet and they began madly sprinting to the Seattle Center uh, box, like the, the Seattle Center Memorial Coliseum box office. They're racing to get into the line to buy these tickets. Because as soon as they heard of Hulk Hogan, it was like, if I buy a ticket, oh my God, I get Hulk Hogan at this show. And they were so excited. It was like, I've got to go. And I'm afraid, everybody, whatever, listen, I love AEW too. But if you want to sell tickets to your house shows, that is what you have to convince these people. Oh my God. Like, I can't miss this. I got to go see Hangman and John Moxley in a death match in front of my own eyes in this in this intimate setting here. That's what you need. And I'm sorry, but that's not this card. And if they'd sold out the building, fine. You know, Brian's wrong. He's an idiot. I wouldn't even have brought it up. But they are nowhere near that. So these are my thoughts. What a bunch of marks. You know? No, kidding Oh, me? no, no. Let me tell you something. I remember this, too, at the Baltimore Civic Center slash arena. They would make that announcement. But see, the smart people knew when they would make that announcement, and they'd have somebody camped out there right before that announcement would be made. That way you were first in line. That's how you go and do those things. But, yeah, you know, I didn't realize that it was not only being scaled for less than 3,800 people, which again, it's a small building. It's why they like to run the, the Hobart arena. A lot of places do because it's good for TV. It's a, it's an easy size to fill up. And with them only doing a thousand, 
it probably didn't help that did they have a lineup. I don't believe that they had a lineup for a significant period of time, but I am surprised that they didn't throw more at it once they found out that, hey, we're not going to sell this thing out or it's going to take a lot of earth moving to end up selling this thing out. Maybe they get an incredible walk up tomorrow. Maybe that's the case, but that's got to be disappointing. I'm sorry, uh, you know, for a thousand people in there, in that type of building, in that small of a building for your very first house show ever, I don't know. You know, I, I again, and it doesn't sound like we're getting reports. I don't see tweets of, like, you know, people showing up on morning TV shows and that sort of thing that, that ROH has done in the past and that WWE certainly does. So, look, this is all obviously a test balloon for them, but, you know, we'll see how it goes. But it doesn't, on the surface, yeah, from the outside, it doesn't seem like it's going to be all that successful. Need to go back here, says, why are wrestling fans so concerned with ticket sales and ratings, LOL? Just watch and enjoy the show. Well, you know, I mean, I'd like them to come to Seattle for a house show. (laughs) But if they don't sell tickets, they're not coming to Seattle. Nor are they coming to wherever you live. Need to go back. If they don't sell tickets, they won't do house shows, and you won't get one to go and watch and blindly enjoy. (laughs) So, uh, you know, I'd like to see them sell some tickets. I'd like to see them do well. But I think that's good advice for a lot of people. Obviously, the people that are listening to this show and tuned into this show are the hardest of the hardcore. But realistically, as a fan, you don't want to obviously have the ambiance and have the aesthetic of an empty building. But with that said, you shouldn't really care about the ratings. You shouldn't really care about the ticket sales. What you should care about is the product that they're giving you on TV. That's pretty much it. Well... I'm quite concerned about these things because I would like you to should all be. It's continue. your business, buddy. Not my you're, business. You're still as trying a to fan. sell tickets for Saturday. As a fan, I want them to come to Seattle and run a house show. But if the house shows do not do well, they are not going to come to yes, Seattle. Yes, but you that would make me about sad ticket sales would not do any justice to that. It won't help bring them there or anything like that. Not, then you'll just be upset and frustrated that your people around. Should we not you do don't a show then? We're not going to talk. Crying out loud. Then this guy goes, Are give him a pass. Me? This is the first time they've run a house yesterday. show, he says. You guys think Tony Khan is a noob? Like he doesn't know? I mean, this is the card. I'm what confused as to for? why. But, like, you need a big, you need a good lineup for the house show. Why is there so much pushback to this? I don't get it. Why? Can anyone explain this to me? No, I'm not allowed to talk, Brian. I like it, too. I like AEW too. Okay. How many times can you say that today? You love you some AEW. Brian Alvarez reported he loves AEW. I do not. He understand wants it to come to his town. This pushback, please. But whatever. I would like him to come to my town. They did. They, didn't they came even to, use to you. my town for TV. Okay. You know. Yeah. You know what actually used to come to my town twice, yeah. and it was awesome. What? Well, it was NXT. And <laughs> you know what happened? They didn't Um, sell very many tickets. They don't do house shows anymore. (laughs) That's the problem. Dude, these NXT house shows that they ran were awesome. They were awesome, awesome shows. And they drew poorly, and now they don't tour anymore. Hello? You know where they may have wanted to run this first show? Baltimore. Should have went back into the old uh, Du Burns Arena where AEW used to run, or at the very least, to UMBC where they've done shows. And maybe there's a reason that they decided not to do that. But I feel bad for the people of Baltimore that lost Ring of Honor. Because I know for a lot of people up there, you know, those you got Maryland Championship wrestling shows that are always usually pretty good as an indie to go to. And you had Ring of Honor up there as basically your home promotion. You inherited it from Philadelphia when Sinclair bought it. So I feel a little bit bad for those folks who used to have a chance to go to all those shows. Kobe Kingston needs surgery. He's in Birmingham, Alabama. Man, oh man. He he hurt his ankle and then everybody was all worried and then he put that uh, picture up and said everything was going to be all right. And we he all lied. thought it was going to be all right and now he's going in for surgery. I shouldn't say he lied, but he led people on. That was Well, nasty. it's possible that it was swollen and they were like, hey, you're probably all right. We'll see what happens when the swelling goes down. And then he wasn't all right. Yeah, say six weeks for that swelling to go down, unfortunately. And we have uh, the New Japan Cup update. Sonata beat Naito in the main event. So he is moving on. Told you. Following the match, the members of just four guys came to the ring. 
Sonata and Taichi shook hands. The rest of the faction embraced Sonata as well. Oh, the old dads. I swear it should be a picture. You know, you can be Taka, and I don't know. Everybody else can spread it out, but you, Vinny, Craig, and Sean, just four guys. Who's going to be your Sonata? Well, it's not anymore. So Sonata has joined. He shook just five guys. Taichi's hand. A big trademark problem. And they are now just five guys. Yes. <laughs> They are now a burger joint. They got great fries, but they're greasy. So uh, just five guys is the... Uh, <laughs> I wonder how long that faction is going to last in New Japan, USA, before they get a new name. I was going to say, where, what cease and desist comes faster? Do they get one from five guys? or you know, Actually, you know what? Their revenge can come from Nippon TV or whoever it is that controls their... They shut everything down, but... Look, I, Sonata, it was time to make a move. I thought they could do something. I thought maybe it could be, you know, him turning on Naito and taking control of LIJ. That's not the case. It ends up being him leaving the group, which is really the best thing that they could do right now to try to revitalize him, give him one big singles push, you know, before you can't do it anymore. So I think the timing on this is good. Plus, we got Mark Davis a win over Evil, so... You know, maybe this is the direction they were going in anyway with Osprey and Sonata. And to be honest, the future, you know, down the line, I love the idea of that match. DJ wants to know if I want to apologize. Listen, I'm not the guy that said that there was no way Sonata was beating Naito. That was Dave. Don't get on me. And Naito hasn't won this tournament yet, DJ. If he wins a tournament, then maybe you're on to something here. But he hasn't yet. We have more matches. We have, uh, what do we have here? Why is our front page so... The front page has a story about the Sonata Naito match with Sonata winning, but then at the bottom we have upcoming matches, which includes Naito and Sonata. That is not correct. You need a guy who's that is good not with correct. The wrestling news. That's what you need. We have got uh, the semifinals, which is coming up. Uh, well, anyway, I'm gonna have to get. I'm literally gonna have to get the uh, entire bracket here because the front page story is is inaccurate. Oh man, I don't want to throw anybody on the bus, but who did that, huh? Let's get it here. You know what people love, I've discovered, is... Uh, you twisting in the wind, which I'm letting you do right now? Finding a bunch of stuff on uh, <laughs> on my phone. All right, here's where we are right now, okay? This is where we are. We have two more quarterfinal matches. We got Goto and Tamatanga, okay? And David Finley and Shota Umino, all right? So those guys are then going to square off, and we'll have the... Uh, Semifinals March 19th. We have one semifinal already, which is Sonata and Mark Davis. Yeah, I expect Sonata might win that one, but you know what? We don't know yet. It hasn't happened. And then the Goto Tamatanga winner versus the David Finley Show to Umino winner. And then those two will face off for the finals, which are coming up on March 21st. That is the update on the New Japan Cup. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Five dollars on the line, myself and DJ. Whether or not Sonata wins this New Japan Cup. I don't even know how all of this has just erupted into a five dollar bet. What side are you on? I don't think I don't think he's winning the tournament. But see, the thing is like I don't care. <laughs> I never had a problem with Sonata. I don't care, but My, I'm going to start a fight, do well, a no. segment, and Here's put money on it. Here's the thing. Don't care. This is what I said, okay? Oh, my God. This is what I said. Good. I said, listen, I think that it should be Finley, okay? New guy. Go on and, you know, lose to Okada or whatever, but something new. Well, I've been preaching forever. I want something new, okay? I said, all right, Sonata wins. Now what? Sonata wins, he goes to face Okada, he loses again. I mean, how many times have I seen this? 500 times? That's how this all began. And then, somehow, I got in trouble for mocking or something. I didn't. I just, I don't want to see the same stuff over and over again from New Japan, dude. I don't want to see it. Like, I, I, I dude, even Battle in the Valley, it's like, okay, we're going to get a, a real big match. It's Okada and Tanahashi again. Like, I'm sure the match is awesome. If I were there, I probably would have loved it. But how many Okada Tanahashi matches can I see? I'm ready for somebody new, some new matches, some new feuds. You know what I'm saying? Please. Oh, great. Sonata wins the tournament. He goes on, he loses again for the 85th time. Now, listen, listen. If Sonata wins his tournament 
and he goes on and he beats Okada, and he actually becomes the IWGP Heavyweight Champion, great! But do I think that's going to happen? No, I don't. So I'd like to see Finley. Like, let's put the rocket to a new guy. Let's get a new guy in there. Let's get moving wait, wait, on wait, this thing, second. brother. <laughs> wait, hold on. Time out, time out. Put the rocket on Finley and have him defeat? He doesn't, need, he doesn't need to beat him the first time in. But, like, that's that's something new for us here. An Okada, Finley, IWGP Look, World Heavyweight Championship match. You're that's right. something new. You're right. And I think Finley needs something to give him credibility because I think he's facing a big uphill struggle in that. But I'm also not going to turn my nose up at a revitalized Sonata because he's got everything except for – some people have said it's effort. Some people have said it's a push. Some people have said everything about this guy. If they go ahead and decide to give him a new look, even if he doesn't win the first one, but they're serious about keeping him in the top of the mix until the end of the year, then I'm for it, okay? As long as they get something out of whoever it is, whether it be Finley or Sonata, and frankly, they need something out of both of them with the way they're being repackaged, so... There you go. And Mark Davis, too, for anybody that, look, Mark Davis has had a hell of a tournament. Mark Davis may one day be standing on his own as a single star somewhere. He's excellent. With that said, Mark Davis should not win this. I'm sorry. He already got the benefit of, unfortunately, Osprey's injury. He had a great match with him, had a good match today, but he is not winning. You know, I'd put another $5 on Mark Davis not winning. But I don't care. Edge the bet. You know what? If he won, it is a new guy. I love it. Although, the guy who doesn't care except when he cares, right? I, I, I honestly never care. But I have to pretend like I care. You know what I mean? Look at you, you know what worked I mean? emotions. We have, uh, what else do we have here? What other news do we have? Oh, yes. I just retweeted it. So you'll you'll be stunned to hear that uh, Cody Rhodes will be on SmackDown tonight. So there's that. If I can find my own Twitter, this is like a constant battle now. Where's my own stuff? There you we go. You have 97 monitors up. Why are you relying on your phone? And where's the iPad? Because you know I like to I like to set things up so that you know if I if I you wouldn't understand. It's just so complicated. Anyway. What it's else Friday, do we have for SmackDown? All right, here we go. True McIntyre versus Sheamus tonight. The winner will face Gunther at WrestleMania 39. My bold prediction here is that they're going to tie again. Yeah. And they will both face Gunther at WrestleMania 39. Mm -hmm. Sami Zayn will confront Jey Uso. Cody Rhodes will appear. And we actually have a mixed tag team match. Rhea and Dominic. We'll be facing Zelina and Santos Escobar. That is not fair. That's not a fair mixed tag team match. They haven't been fair to Santos Escobar yet, so. Rhea is going to smash poor Zelina in this match here tonight. Oh, my God. Yeah, you know how bad this is actually may be for Zelina, getting thrown around by Rhea in this showcase. Huh? We also have Tony Khan announcing that this Wednesday in Independence, Missouri, the following match has been added to AEW Dynamite. Kenny Omega versus Vikingo. In Independence, Missouri. Yes. I'm going to take it. That match is going to be awesome. That match that would is going to be awesome. That would sell tickets. Yeah, it's going to sell tickets. I think. I don't know. I don't know what's going on anymore. But yeah, I do know what's going on with... Uh, we got the dynamite numbers from uh, from Wednesday night. Actually, another one here before we even get to that. I want to wish the best to Eddie Kingston, who is out with COVID. This story here. So, John Moxley was booked for a match with OTT years ago. Okay, I'm not talking recently. Years ago, pandemic, and then the pandemic occurred, and then he couldn't make the date. All right. John Moxley hates not making his dates, okay? So he promised them, like, I will make this up to you guys. So the pandemic ends, and he contacts them, and he's like, I'm coming in for this show. Let's, let's do it. So then, like, 
uh, whatever it was ago, a month ago, six weeks ago, all of a sudden, for the same day that he had confirmed, for a, a date that he had originally scheduled years earlier, AEW books the house show. The one tomorrow! And it's the same day as OTT. So for like, you know, a couple of weeks, he was billed as being in two places at the same time. Because I guess, I presume they were trying to figure out oh, what are we going to do? Because he did not want to not do OTT again. But he's under AEW contract and they advertised him for that house show. So for like a week or two, it was just both plays at the same time because they were going to figure out what's going on here. Well, at the end of the day, he is under contract to AEW, and so he's doing this AEW house show. And so their make good was to send Eddie Kingston in his place to this show. And unfortunately, now Eddie Kingston has COVID. So uh, now we have no Moxley. We have no Eddie Kingston. And uh, it just this the whole thing just sucks. And he's got COVID. So hopefully he's all right. Hopefully he's better soon. Hopefully one of these days John Moxley actually gets to work OTT. <laughs> yeah, really. And uh, man, oh, man. Yeah, so Big Damo's tweet this morning about that, you know, saying, you know, TT crew, okay, we got to step up. You know, this is just what happens. And uh, Davey Richards still going over there to face Big Damo, Gabriel Kidd against Man Lake Doris. So there's, you know, it's just a tough situation. But, you know, not only will I know John Moxley will make it up to them in some way because it's probably just going to eat at him until it does, but I'm, I'm hoping AEW can also really make it up for him too for the next big show and send over a handful of people so, you know, something like this doesn't happen. Wednesday night's Dynamite, 852,000 viewers, down 0.7% from last week. Third lowest audience of 2023. And the 18 to 49 at a 0.27 was tied for the uh, lowest Dynamite uh, demo of 2023. They are almost always top five on cable. They were, I believe, 12th on cable. 11th. And uh, they had NBA, NCAA tournament play-in games, World Baseball Classic on Wednesday. So among non-sports programming, they were third on cable for the evening. So rough night for AW on Wednesday. And uh, we'll see how they do this coming Wednesday night. Have you ever seen one episode of the Vanderpump Rules? Because I have not. No kidding me i don't even know what it is what is it? i don't either i don't know well, i don't know I old men like a... do radio show i don't know news at 11 i know what below deck is hey listen a woman watches that one four two five seven eight zero seven five six six somebody uh text us what this vander pump yeah, what rules is thing is well, i know it's a reality show but like what um, I don't know. I try not to sneeze desperately. It's just been a rough week. Your eyes are looking red and <sighs> how it stopped rubbing on those so much. My God, you're breaking blood vessels. Oh, man. You look like 48 years old now. For your information, this person says Independence is in the greater Kansas City area. It is not a random small town. Who said that, Mike? Bro, I'm from the East Coast, okay? All your towns are random small towns. Wow. You can Frank Gotch out there? Wow. Actually, that would be Iowa. That would be cool. This person has a great idea. What's that? We need some No Way Jose kicking off the house shows. Damn right we do. But you know what? There's bigger issues before No Way Jose opens a show. Man, that NXT house show with No Way Jose opening the show, I'll never forget it. Dude, this guy danced. He was like the Honky Tonk Man. Remember when Honky Tonk Man would come out and he'd go, you want me to sing my song? And he'd sing his song or whatever. And then he'd do like a nothing happened in match. He'd go, you want me to sing my song? And he'd sing his song. And then they go, you want me to sing it again? And he'd <laughs> And like the people are just, and no way Jose, like on, on NXT, he would just, you know, dance down to the ring with the, uh, the Rosebud, or that was the other guy. Who, who, no way, Rose. What, what would no way Jose's blokes called? 
That was just a big ass conga line, wasn't it? Oh yeah, the conga line. Know. So on NXT, he just danced down and like go around the ring in his, with his conga line. But uh, at the house show, it's like it was the opener. They hit the guy's music, and everyone's immediately on their feet. And then No Way Jose, it was in like a, a theater or whatever. This guy danced, and literally, he went all the way up the theater aisle. He went out the door. He came all the way down the other side with the conga line. Like, people are slapping hands, and they're dancing. And he gets in the ring, and, you know, God bless him. And actually, God bless him, because he did nothing. He had the most nothing-happening match, but everything he did, the crowd went nuts for. Because it was just a simple, basic crowd-pleaser. And then when it was over, him and the conga line, they danced all the way up the aisle, out the thing, all the way back down the aisle again. And, man, when this the opening thing was over, these fans were, like, ready. They were hot. They were so excited for the rest of the show. And I thought, the rest of his life, dude. This is all this guy needs to do for the rest of his life. And then, like, months later, he got fired. And I was like, okay, hey. it's not my show. Whatever. Who cares? And by the way, he got fired and he didn't run house shows anymore. So, I mean, putting two and two together, that's what I think. He was smarter than the boogie woogie man Jimmy Valiant. You know what I mean? Go out there, dance around, clap your hands, throw an elbow, maybe drop an elbow, go home. I mean, it doesn't really get much better than that. This guy goes, Brian loved Kona Reeves as well. I don't remember that at all. No. No, what was his gimmick? The something Kona Reeves? He was just big. What? No, he had like a gimmick. He was like the the best Kona Reeves or it was something generic. The finest. The, the finest, finest Kona Reeves. Like yeah, that guy. Coffee. Yeah. <laughs> See, NXT is so much better nowadays, everybody. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back on the show, Brian Elbera is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Simper VB, also of WrestlingObserver.com. This guy makes a great point about house shows, by the way. He says, another thing worth mentioning for house shows is it is a good way to practice matches and work out the kinks. You could do MJF, Sammy, Darby, Jungle Boy, four-way as a house show main event. You'd sell tickets. They'd all get experience doing a match. And then away you go. Which is actually, you know, that's a lot of what they do with WWE as well. It's like they put the pay-per-view matches at house shows. Everybody works their pay-per-view match. And then uh, and then away we go. So uh, they did it that way for years, and there's a reason yeah. that it was done that way, and it should be done that way. It should be a touring product, just making it a TV product or making it something akin to the Harlem Globetrotters or the Ice Capades. It may work for WWE. It does not work for the rest of wrestling, and AEW can't be that way. It just goes back to the very beginning. Put some better people on there. Put some bigger names on there. Practice what you're going to do on the pay-per-views. Try some things out. Get people experience. But you got to put a better foot forward than what it seems like they're doing in Troy tomorrow. Well, we got a lot coming up this weekend, including another UFC pay-per-view. Where are that? Ugh. There's another. GCW's on. Come on. Oh, we got Vanderpump. Oh, not enough time. Yeah. Same Vanderpump on, Rules is a wealthy restaurant owner in L.A. who hires young people to work for her and tries to help them learn about business, but the young people keep messing it up because they like drama and partying. This sounds like NXT. We're out of here, everybody. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.